Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to a bit of a bonus video. So you might remember last week I did a review of this, the Backman Hall class. And during my review I concluded that as nice as the loco looked, it didn't justify the modern price tag. However, the model I looked at was an older version. If you remember the box, it had the older Backman packaging. And people, or some people, said to me, how do you know that Backman haven't updated the Hall class? Well, I did my research. I studied photos of modern listings. I looked at reviews. I'm basically certain that the latest Backman Hall class, the 2020 model, has not been retooled or changed majorly. But the question still stands, how do I know? Now, I'm very critical of Backman in the past, but I want to be, I want to do right by them. I don't want to be saying things that may not be true. So I've done something insane. I have purchased the latest version of the Hall class. This is 32-002A and it is Stanway Hall, the weathered version that I showed. And this cost me £138.50, I believe it was, from Rails of Sheffield, including postage. So today we're going to take a look at this and find out exactly whether or not Backman has have updated this model in the 20 years or so that it's been released, just less than 20 years. I do know there are one or two minor improvements. I know the cab detail is supposed to be a little bit better and that this version includes etched nameplates, which my old version didn't. But we're really interested in the mechanical differences. Have Backman updated this mechanically in any way? Well, that is what we're going to find out. Quick video today, not a full review. Let's have a look at this. Looks all right, must be said. Looks really quite nice in the weathering. Let's get it out and see what the differences are. Now, as you may remember, while the detailing in places did require a little bit of refinement and it wasn't quite up to modern standards, it was mainly the mechanism I had issues with, namely that ridiculous placement of the DCC socket uh, inside the loco and therefore no connection, electrically speaking, to the tender either, which means no tender pickups. Uh, the mechanism had a fire three-pole motor, not a five-pole motor, three-pole motor, no flywheel, no proper bearings on the wheel set, and therefore it did not run very well on my track, uh, slowing down on those second radius curves, as you may remember. So, detailed mag vent here is one difference, uh, which is obviously not actually a part of the model, but this is here in the box. You have the name and number plates there, which are etched. That's very, very nice. And then we've got a detail bag there with a few bits in there. Brake rigging, buffer beam details, such as the vacuum pipes and some other tiny little pieces in there. I'm not sure what those are. Anyway, yeah, we're not interested in the little details. Let's have a look at the Loco herself. Now this version has been weathered, I should say that. That adds around 10 pounds to the RRP. Um, I think 159 was the RRP without weathering, but I can't say for sure because they don't actually have the unweathered version on Backman's website right now. Okay, first thing then, first things first, still no electrical connection to the tender, which means that we still have the decoder inside the locomotive, presumably the same poor design, but we'll check that out. Therefore, obviously, no tender pickups or anything like that. So, we'll look at this more closely. First of all, we'll take a look at some of the details and see if my gripes have been corrected with the modern version or not. I'm guessing largely not. So there she is then, Stanway Hall, up close and personal for you. And great as this looks, basically every single one of my gripes with the old model holds true with this 2020 model, which demonstrates that it has not been retooled in any way since my old version was created. So very briefly then, you've got the ugly parting line at the top there, very noticeable, in fact, more noticeable given the weathering actually, so that's not exactly great. And we've also got now some sort of nicks and imperfections on the boiler. I don't know whether that's the weathering also on other parts of the model such as the top of the splashes so the finish isn't absolutely fantastic although overall no complaints with the decoration you've still got those oversized lamp irons as you can see which look a little bit unfortunate don't they even they haven't been updated same with the whistles they're still not separately fitted they're still molded exactly the same as they were on the old version as I already alluded to though, the cab detail is better. I will admit that. The cab does look better on the 2020 version. As you can see though, overall the model has not changed and what is clear is that this has not been retooled. So now let's take a look inside and see what the differences are, if any. So I'm noticing as I'm undoing these screws that the body is fixed on in exactly the same way as the previous version I looked at. Uh, so I really do think that this is gonna be exactly the same thing inside. That's my guess, but obviously guesswork is no good in model reviewing terms, so we have to prove these things. So let's pop the body off. 
and take a look. Wow, it is absolutely identical. So what have we got here? Three pole motor, no flywheel of any kind. DCC eight pin socket in the back there, underneath the cab, horribly annoying to fit. A lot of people said in the comments, surely the DCC decoder goes here where this weight goes. I think that's right. Yes, there are some little uh, tucking opportunities for the wires beside the motor there. And yeah, I think you're supposed to remove that weight and put in the decoder, which if anything is even worse. That is quite a lot of weight. It's right over the driving wheels. Are you telling me you've got to sacrifice all that lovely weight if you want to chip this with DCC? Ugh, that is just silly. Anyway, let's remove the base keeper plate and take a look at those axles. Do we now have proper bearings fitted? Put your guesses in the comments. It's going to be no. All right, let's see for sure then, shall we? I think this should just lever up. A bit simpler because it doesn't have the brake rigging fitted. All right, there's your answer then. Mechanically identical to the 2004 model. Look there, no proper bearings on the wheel set. So it has not been improved mechanically in any way, as far as I can tell. Uh, if you've spotted anything on these close-ups, uh, which you think has been improved, do let me know down in the comments. But as far as I can tell, there is no difference whatsoever. Now, some clever people, um, I will put their names, well, his name on the screen now, because I've forgotten his name now, but someone said uh, when they saw the performance of my old Bankman Hall, why don't you check the gauging of the locomotive? And I did, and I found that my older hall model uh, was misgaged, which is the same as the Dapol Terrier was, which makes me think perhaps next year I should be uh, checking the gauge of my models as a matter of course. So I'm going to check the gauge of this one too and let you know if that's going to be a problem before I do get it tested. Right folks, the results are in. So the correct back-to-back -back gauge should be 14.4 millimetres. The old BR Black Hall class I had measured 14.6 millimetres back-to-back and the front-to-back -back was off quite a bit as well. But either way, that's 0.2 millimetres off on the back-to-backs. And that actually varied depending on the position that the wheel set was in when I was measuring it. I took quite a lot of measurements, which suggests that the wheels aren't even level on the axles, although it is a fraction of a millimetre. This one is averaging 14.7 millimetres. Uh, so that's 0.3 millimetres out on the back to back, which means that this is gauged even worse than the old Backman version I had. So the gauging is still not right on the 2020 version, but let's find out whether that makes any practical difference and give this a test on the track. So there it is then looking great down onto the track. Now, unlike my older BR Black Hall class, uh, this particular model hasn't been run in, obviously, because it's brand new. And so to make this a fair test, I will have to run it in for the full 30 minutes in each direction before I can do the dreaded hill test with coaches. But straight out of the box, just out of interest, let's see how this performs. Uh, there we go, forwards, absolutely fine. So it's working, that's good. I've obviously not upset anything in my prodding and poking. Is it still a reasonably fast model? I thought the old version was pretty speedy. This one, not so much. Uh, so we shall see. I mean, like I say, it'll probably be a little, oh yeah, even there in reverse, it's a little bit faster. That was at 50%. Uh, yeah, it will probably speed up as it gets run in. That's usually what you do see. So I will let this run in. And while I do, I will introduce you to another friend. Let me just bring it in. Now this one, uh, I mean, I bought the weathered black version one to prove my point. I bought this one because I really like the look of it. Uh, but you can now say that I'm an expert in Backman Hall class locos. So I bought this one because it's in the Great Western Green. It looks absolutely fantastic. It is a modern one in the modern packaging. So yeah, this would have proved my point, but I wanted to go the whole hog. Anyway, yeah, once again, exactly the same mechanism, not very good by modern standards. And this has been running and it does have the coaches coupled. So I'm gonna set this to 40% speed. And we shall see how it handles the curve. There it comes. Oh, <laughs> seem familiar to you? And yes, this one was out of gauge as well. In fact, a lot of Backman Locos that I measured were, but I'm not sure if the amount is enough to cause problems. But look at that. Oh, God. That's it. It's crawled to a halt. There we go. There's the new one. Brand new, that one. Running in. And this LNER, sorry, LNER, what is the matter? The Great Western Green version, I actually bought this DCC fitted and I've removed the chip, which means that this version does not have the weight inside, which explains why it, well, 
stopped dead on Gordon's Hill. Obviously the lack of weight over the uh, driving wheels there has significantly reduced the pulling power which makes perfect sense. So while this version isn't on DCC, the pulling power is probably what you'd expect from DCC. Well, they are a bit faster, I've put it up to 50% and it's actually now doing it, so that's not too bad. And so I should hope with six coaches. But as you can see, yeah, the dramatic slowdowns on this curve, it seems is typical of the Backman Hall class model. Look at that, my God. And yes, I will demonstrate the Hornby version after I've showed you my new one from Rails. Uh, wow, that's worse than it was when I first filmed it. <laughs> cool, blimey. Yes, like I say, I will show you the Hornby's performance at the same speed setting on the controller. Um, just to show you the difference, but there we go. Yeah, wheel slipping again. Like I say though, it's had the weight removed as you would have to do if you were DCC fitting the model. So there we go. Can't even manage six coaches. I don't know what's worse. Okay, folks, there we go. That is the running in completed. I've just been downstairs to edit what I've already filmed so that I stand a chance of getting this video released today. Uh, so yeah, let's pop this onto the outside line now then and see how it will handle the six coaches. Will all three of my Backman Hall class locos perform the same way on Gordon's Hill? Well, I'd be interested to find out. So without any further ado, forwards please, 40%, here we go. Oof. Not a good start, but we shall see. The gauging, bear in mind, is a little bit worse on this example, so it will be interesting to see if it's even worse. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Ooh, crikey. Uh -huh. Well, I think that's point proved. <laughs> good God. So there you have it. I think that is a fairly clear result. Now I made a mistake, I shouldn't really have been comparing my you know, 15 year old version with Backman's latest release. I did my research and I was 99% sure they were the same thing, but I didn't know for sure and I couldn't prove it. So that was my bad, but thank you so much for those of you who let me know. Oh, it's stopped. Hmm. Well, that's nothing to do with the gauge, is it? That's just a pants puller. Let's give it a nudge. But yes, as I was saying, thank you to the people who let me know that, you know, I, I welcome criticism and in this case you helped me to grow and develop as a reviewer because I'm, I'm not going to do that again. And yes, I took one for the team and bought a very expensive model, which is actually no better. <laughs> and in fact, possibly quite a lot worse actually, I don't think the old model was quite that sluggish, but then again, this has only done an hour's running. The old one might have done more, so maybe I will keep this thing around keep it running see if it gets any better as it ages matures like a cheese but no brand new no better no difference no improvement to the mechanism still a bit of a lemon okay here it comes then this is the much cheaper hornby railroad schools class at the same speed 40 percent well it might not be percent 40 is what it says on the controller and as you can see it does slow down a little bit on the hill here it is slower anyway in terms of its gearing that's what i found during the initial review if you remember but it will be interesting to see if this can actually make it up the hill with the same coaches with the same power coming out of the controller i wonder it's a lighter loco by the way yeah it doesn't weigh quite so much i think already it's past the point where the backman stopped but is it still going to stop no so that's interesting. People again were telling me in the comments about the friction coefficient of the wheel material. Well, they're actually talking about the Dapol Terrier, I think, but obviously it's relevant here because despite this model being lighter, it's a much better puller. And as you can see, as you could see, the slowdowns were much less noticeable. So there you have it. I think that has set the record straight. Now I can give you a 100% accurate impression of what you will get if you purchase the latest version of the Backman Hall class. And even though I knew deep down it wasn't going to be any different to the version I reviewed, I'm still slightly shocked and disgusted that they haven't upgraded it mechanically in any way. But that's absolutely true. They have not done that. And now we all know it too. So thanks for watching. Little bonus video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, share your thoughts. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the hall, I can take measurements, I can investigate different things if you've got anything else you'd like to know about the model. But there we go, that's the Hornby one signing off. Thanks for watching, 
See you tomorrow for another review.